Oh, it's World Cup time yet again. Cayman Islands' second consecutive appearance at the finals. It's 2034 in China, and we play China in the opening game today. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, International Manager of Mystery. Managing obscure nations so you don't have to. And we're back home, back where we belong, back with the new gen nation international manager of mysteries. Here is, for those of you who are new to this one, what I did a little bit of playing around with the database. I took 10 of the world's top teams in terms of their youth academies and their youth setup, transplanted them all to the Cayman Islands so. Their new gens, or regens, whatever you want to call them, are of Cayman Islander nationality. And then we're seeing how that affects the national team's progress. And well, as you can see here, we're up, still up, hovering around that 50 mark in the world rankings. We are at the World Cup, second time we've qualified uh, after 2030, where a fantastic victory over Cameroon after a heavy defeat to Spain, um, took us through to the knockout rounds where we faced Argentina and lost to them. Now, last time, of course, we went all out. We had the big FM community introduction. Do check that one out if you haven't done so already. This time, I'm going to strip it back, keep it a bit more simple, get straight to it. Now, we have been, I think, fairly lucky in our draw because... Um, we were, of course, in the bottom group of seeds. We were immediately drawn in Group A. Uh, as soon as that happened, as soon as we were drawn in Group A, I thought, fantastic. Every time, Group A has the host nation. So, with China being the host nation, I mean, no offence to the great nation of China, but they are the weakest of the top seeds. So, you know, we dodged a bullet. We dodged Brazil, Argentina, all the top European teams, and so on. Who's the other team in the group, you may ask? Well, from pot two, there was a mix of kind of the second tier European nations and some African nations and some Asian nations. Obviously, we couldn't draw the Asian or the North American nations. We got another, we got a European nation. Our other opponents are going to be Austria. So this is interesting. I think with two teams to go through, We've got a fairly decent chance of making the knockout rounds again here. Famous last words, maybe. But opening up against China, opening match of the entire tournament. I mean, take a look at their team. If I just put them back in order. Now, first thing I know is they don't have a proper goalkeeper. They've been a bit cheeky and they've gone for grayed out ones. But if you look, are you looking for a star player here? Well, we've got Huanking. Who can be found, Huanking, in the middle of defence. Huanking for the Chinese national team. And Huanking for the Manchester United team. 44 million, Huanking. And he is by far their best player. But he's a Huanking defender. They've also got a player here at Guangzhou called Wanki. Wanki. So we've got Huang King and Wang Qi in defence. That is going to be fun for commentators the world over. By far their most experienced player, 113 caps. At Guangzhou, I don't know if he's ever been abroad. He has been to Portugal for a little bit, but spent most of his career in China as Wang Qi. So Wang Qi and Huang King, those are the players to watch out for in the centre of defence. But when it comes to their strike force, their midfield... Nothing really to write home about. So, I think we've got to be going for the win today. Austria, on the other hand, different proposition entirely. You do not see many values here south of 10 million. They've got a few, but most of the players worth quite a bit of money. And probably, I mean, look at this. They've got a guy here, David Lucas, £78 million, pounds, 25 years old, in his pomp, 65 caps and 40 goals, playing at Real Madrid. We're going to have a tough job trying to contain him. But of course, what about the Cayman Islands? Well, our experiment has thrown a couple of world-class 
players our way. Emerson Skeet still going strong. 128 caps now. And at 39 goals, he is the top scoring player in the current squad. Which is, you know, pretty impressive considering he's a deep lying playmaker. But he is known for his um, free kicks and bursting into the box to get on the end of some of our moves. By far our best player. We've seen it time and time again where if he gets suspended or injured in one of these tournaments, we suffer. But, you know, he's the man to watch. Liverpool player. He's by far our biggest player. Hot on his heels, though, is David Wood Roach. Now, don't hold it against him that he's an Aston Villa player. He's valued at £55 million. And you see here, it's going to be a big World Cup for him because a couple of teams have got that eye on him. Tottenham and Real Madrid. Real Madrid are after this guy, which would be massive for Cayman Islands football. Only 26 and already on 120 caps. He is by far our best defender. After that, it kind of, kind of falls away a bit. We don't have much superstar depth beyond that. I mean, we've got players who are still in the youth ranks at places like Barcelona and Man United, but they're not first-team regulars. And then we've got a bunch of journeymen playing at smaller clubs around the world. So you can see we've got uh, we've got one player here who's two de Cupid's gone back to the Cayman Islands and he's playing there on an amateur contract. We've got players at smaller teams in Holland and Spain. We've got a player from Walsall. We've got um, Guadalajara, not Guadalajara in Mexico, but a small Spanish second division B team. And, you know, there's not a lot of depth. I mean, our next most experienced player is James Rigg. A bit of a hipster he is at FC St. Pauli. 100 caps, 37 goals. Not really a prolific goal scorer, as seen from the fact that, you know, he's been outscored in the national team by Emerson Skeet few new faces in here as well. We've got this guy, Enkuma Wright, Barcelona attacking midfielder. He's come in, played a couple of games for us, looked decent. We've also got this guy, Clay Webb Challenger, one of those players who was holding out, thinking, I'm going to play for England, I'm going to play for England, I'm going to play for England. And then eventually the World Cup persuaded him to think otherwise, and he's now here as a backup for us. And also, a kind of new addition, we've got, we haven't had one of these for a while, we've got Myron van Brederode, a Dutch player who decided, after playing for a few years at AZ Alkmaar, one of the teams that we transplanted over to the Cayman Islands, decided he would take up Cayman Islands nationality. And he's you're pretty good. Um, plays a left winger, can play up front as well, so it gives us a couple of options. So far, four caps and one goal. Welcome to your new nation. Now, fixture-wise, since we completed our qualifying campaign for the World Cup, we took on Venezuela, a bit of a disappointing game that one, as we lost 2-1. We beat Cape Verde 1-0 to round out 2033. Into 2034, we did that thing that teams often do because we're playing Austria we arranged friendlies against Switzerland and Germany and Turkey too, because there's lots of Turkish people in that part of the world. We lost 1-0 away to Turkey. Very tight game. We probably, you know, we could have won that on another day. Bit of a heartbreaker against Switzerland. We were 2-0 down. We fought back into it. James Rigg and the new boy, Van Brederode, equalising deep into stoppage time. And then the Swiss... Dabbed our hearts with a Swiss Army knife and scored with the last kick of the game to claim the win. We then managed to get bloody Germany to come all the way to the Cayman Islands to give us a send-off for the World Cup. We lost 2-0 in the end, but it was a pretty decent performance. We, you know, we held out until you know, we were only 1-0 down right in the 88th, 89th minute. So we did pretty well there. And then we came over to Asia. And we had a final warm-up game against South Korea. And we bloody well beat them 4-0 in Korea as well. Darwin Ebanks with a brace, Jamal Rowe and Jonathan Elliott with the goals. So absolutely fantastic morale-boosting win ahead of today's game against China. We're actually favourites for this, which is interesting. 
by the way, we are ranked 51st in the world. China are ranked like 33rd and Austria 32nd. So, you know, it, there's not a lot to choose between those two. I would say Austria are most likely a better team than China. But this is how we're lining up today. Ribeiro in goal, Wood Roach and Ebanks Webb partnering in the centre of defence, Challenger Sanchez and Cupid in the fullback position, Skeet and Rowe in the centre of midfield, Ebanks after that performance against Korea keeps his place in the attack in midfield, Rolls Solomon and Van Breda Road on the wings and a rig up front. So 4 4 2 from Chinese, interestingly, they've decided Huang King should be off to the right and Wang Ki keeps his place in the centre of defence we play 4-2-3-1 as we always do into the dressing room pressure got to be on us here in front of a passionate home crowd um, passionate home crowd for the Chinese of course let's show everyone what we're capable of and let's add in that we um, we've got faith in you guys get out there make a difference try and get us that three points the thing is, of course, with the way the World Cup is set up now, if we can get a win today, that pretty much guarantees us um, progression into the next round, um, you know, with these three team groups. But it's the Chinese who get the first highlight here. I was hoping Solomon would be able to nick that off them. It's all the way back to the keeper. Um, where are we playing? We're playing in the Guangdong Olympic Sports Centre. Huge stadium, huge crowd, more people in the stadium than live in the Cayman Islands as... Oh, oh, what the hell was that? Rig with a, going for the comedy moment of the World Cup right in the first kick of the first game or the first, you know, action of the first game. Oh, my God. Bram Breda Road steals the ball, plays Rig through. Rig <laughs> hits the post, falls over. The ball hits his leg and goes in. Um, he does the old hearty celebration. We'll take it. We will we'll take it. We've taken the lead. Now, you may have thought that was Rig sliding in to score that, but look, we haven't had a shot on target yet, which means that was absolutely, definitely a deflection off his foot. But we'll take them. However we get them, we'll take them. Okay, corner now. Can we go two up? Even row with the ball. Row, row your ball. Gently into the box. Ebanks Webb back to Rowe. Rowe plays in Skeet, top scorer. He plays in Solomon. Solomon's cross, though, gets charged down. But Solomon, oh, he was right in there trying to win that back, wasn't he? But it looks like the Chinese are going to get the break. And we've just got to hold on. If we can keep this 1 0 lead to half time. I would make us favourites to see out the game. Surely the Chinese are going to start getting frustrated. We're going to tell the team. We're going to praise the team. Oh, probably the wrong time to click praise. Just as they got free kick in a dangerous position, Ribeiro saves and falls to the ground afterwards. But it's a corner for China. The danger is not over yet. Now it is. It's cleared, um, but oh, Van Brederode couldn't get to it first. Oh, 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 a bit of a dive there. I am not convinced that, you know, there, were, there was much contact there at all. But okay, Van Brederode got away with a yellow. We are now 1-0 up. Ooh, China have been, you know, have been the better team. Uh, after the goal, they've been pushing for it. But um, I'm going to say, you know, Things are going well, but you're capable of better, boys. You're the Cayman Islands. You've you've taken Mexico to a penalty shootout before in the final of the Gold Cup. You can beat China. Come on, let's get out there and do it. This is good. We've got the Chinese looking nervous. A couple of them. Wanky is a bit motivated. Wanking nervous out on the right. Everyone else looking pretty damn nervous. Oh, we've got nervous centre-backs now. Oh, we've got a highlight coming. I'm going to hold off on a shout until we've seen the outcome of this particular passage of play. China do play it back to their keeper a lot. They're very kind of cautious in that sense. But now the long ball over the top. Wen Hao is going for it, but he's hit the side netting. So we're going to go with that praise. Look, we're 20 minutes away here. 20 minutes away. 
from what would be a famous victory, a second victory at the World Cup for the Cayman Islands. We do well against teams whose name starts with the letter C, it would seem. Anyway, chance to build something here. Wood Roach marshalling it out of defence. Cupid, Skeet, he's the boy. He's already got a yellow. We better hope he doesn't get suspended for later in the tournament. Rig, we're going for another comedy goal. Didn't quite pull it off this time. No punchline on that one. But we're straight on with the highlights again. China still, you know, still playing it back to the keeper. They're looking to do that patient build from the back. Um, I think, you know, you'd think by now they'd be playing with a bit more urgency, but, oh, there we go. They've made a mistake. Rig with the shot. Powerful save by the keeper. <laughs> that seemed to be kind of a tame roll across the turf kind of shot, but he punched it away, just to be sure. I think we're going to start making substitutions now. We've got players on the yards. I don't want to take Skeet off. No way Skeet leaves the pitch unless he's ordered to do so by the referee. So we're going to bring on McLean for Cupid. I'm tempted to take one of those central defenders off, the ones who are looking so nervous. So, Web Challenger, let's get him on there for Ebanks Web, the youngster just making his second appearance for the Cayman Islands. We're going to leave the final substitution till late in the game. Right, let's see if that's going to do the trick. We want to steady the boat. We want to see out this final five minutes. Come on, boys, you can do it. Let's pick up a famous victory. Here we go, we're into stoppage time. We're going to make that final substitution. Who do we take off? Not Emerson Skeet, so we're going to take off Van Bredorode. Bring on younger Jonathan Elliott. Jonathan Elliott, I should point out, 19 years old, 27 caps already, and 10 goals for the Barcelona youngster. Does not play for the Barcelona first team. No chance of ever doing so, but he's playing for us, and we have done it. Wow, not exactly a thrilling game, a complete farce of a goal to win. But you'll take whatever win you can get, especially when it's at the World Cup. Wow, boys, we are going to go passionate on that one. Congratulations. Oh, it all rolls on now to what happens in that next game with Austria and China. If Austria win, then, you know... Basically, the final game just becomes about who takes top spot in the group. Was there a player brilliant for China? If you say so, um, I'm not going to comment on that. McLean, delighted with the victory, came on for the last 10 minutes. What can you say? Cayman Islands can build on it. We can qualify for the second round with a point against Austria. That's going to be the next episode. But please, hit that like button if you enjoyed that picture. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer. See you again soon.